Well, thank you, Daryl. And uh, it, is, it is a privilege to be with all of you. Um, I wish we could all be together in Poland so we could gather face-to-face uh, -face and um, be part of community. But uh, I just praise God for Zoom technology and that we can see each other and hear each other. And I just pray God uses our time. So let me share my screen. Words have power. We, uh, we know that from Scripture. And what I love about, about uh, how God operates is that he has blessed us with language. Um, and Jesus himself call, calls himself the word. And so there's something about words that God blesses. But using words in language to write is something that's a, a, it's a great challenge for some people. Um, and so what I hope is, is that my session will help you get beyond some of the hesitation you have or maybe concerns about, can I write? Am I a good writer? How do I do this well? Um, so what we're going to talk about today is, is that writing begins in our minds. It begins in your thinking. It's not just the words. It's not just uh, using grammar well or the structure. It's, it's thinking. It begins in your mind. And we learn to write by thinking. We think first before we write. Um, and I'll also say that writing is a discipline. Writing is a discipline. Just like um, in athletics, you can't run before you walk. You can't walk before you crawl. You have to start somewhere. Um, and so the quote at the bottom of this screen from James Thurber, who is an American writer, he was a journalist and then uh, became a novelist. He said, don't get it right, get it written. Just start writing. That's where it begins. Um, so the beginning of writing is thinking, reading, and reflection. Uh, the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom. Respect for words <laughs> is the beginning of writing. So uh, I, I commend a book to you by Donald Murray. He's an American uh, journalist. Uh, he's also known as a writing coach. He coached writers uh, at the Boston Globe for many years. And he was also a scholar at the University of New Hampshire. And so he's written a book called Write to Learn. It's in eight different editions. I think any one of those would be a blessing to you. But if you can order it on Amazon or um, by any other means, it, it's, it'll be a great book for you. Donald Murray, Write to Learn. And, and what he says is that we write in our heads. Before we put anything to paper, we write in our heads. We we think what we're going to say. Um, and so his, his whole thing is don't be afraid of, of the blank screen. Don't be, afraid of, don't be afraid of the blank piece of paper. What am I going to put on the paper? He says, don't worry, just start writing. Just start writing. And in the process of writing, you will learn, you will find out what you mean to say. Some of you know people who are verbal processors. They don't know what they want to say. They just start talking and they talk and talk and talk. And then they finally say, that's what I meant to talk about, right? Writing is, this, is the same way, says Donald Murray. And I agree with him um, that you just start writing, start writing. And after three, four, five paragraphs, maybe a page or two, you'll finally come to that. This is my thesis. This is what I mean to say. And so all the stuff before that, you can throw it out. <laughs> it's just, it's just your, your means of getting to your idea. Pre-writing, he talks about. So Donald Murray says that thinking is itself language. Many of my students say, I, uh, I'm not a writer. I can't be a writer. My, my conviction is that everyone can write. Everyone can write. If you can think, you can write. But to get those ideas out of your head onto paper, onto a screen, uh, requires some steps, going from concept to writing. So all of us think in, in uh, concepts, ideas, um, and those ideas are driven by our senses. 
there are things in our minds that are triggered by our senses, certain smells, certain uh, colors, certain sounds trigger ideas and lead to concepts which can become writing. And that's a blessing, but you have to know that they're in there. Next, reading. If you want to be a writer, you've got to be a reader. Make use of good writing to help you see how to write better. Um, imitation is flattery. Imitation is also how we begin to be good writers. You read and you, you understand how other people use language and you imitate how they use those words, how they use those phrases. And so grasp of language, memory of ideas, imagination, all of that comes out of reading. And then writing, as you've been hearing me say, is, is the outflow of our language um, onto a page. So does writing, this, this is a big question a lot of people ask me. Um, students who are thinking about majoring in journalism will say, yeah, but isn't, isn't it all about photos now? Isn't it all about video, social media? Isn't that where everything is going? And I would say, for some people, yes. For some people, yes. But there has become um, a divide in the developed world between the haves and the have-nots. The haves are people who have um, the intellect and the critical thinking to know the difference between truth and error, between um, what is real and what is not. And the way we are able to tell the difference is through our minds, not through our emotions, not through our gut, um, but through thinking. And so this is, this is a quote from Hertha Mueller, uh, who was actually writing um, uh, in describing this, um, the, the era of Stalin in the USSR. And she said, uh, to know the difference between truth and propaganda uh, is to understand language with discernment. She says, language is like air. You, real, you realize how important it is when it is messed up. When your air is bad, it can kill you. And so what she was saying is, is that it's, it's important for us to use words with discernment. So um, another book I would just encourage you to look at, or the writings of this person is Walter Ong. Walter Ong. He wrote a book called Orality and Literacy. And in this book, he says that words we speak and write come from within us. And what he says is that, Orality, which is our means of only communicating through words, necessarily leads to literacy. Again, it begins in your mind. It begins in conversation, and that leads to writing. So photos and video capture our emotion through social media, um, but it's, it's writing, it's words that capture our, our intellect and our reason. So the big question, why aren't you writing? <laughs> or why don't you write more than you do? And here's, here's some things that may have affected you. Um, sadly, some of us have had teachers or had people in our lives who said, oh, you'll never be a writer. You, can, you cannot write. Don't even try. This is terrible. You're not a good writer. Okay? I'm sorry if that happened to you. <laughs> Lord, help you to recover from that horrible teacher or that horrible person in your life who discouraged you and said you were not a good writer. Everyone can write. Of course you can write. Another thing that stops us from writing is rejection. We fear rejection. Just like uh, when we're speaking and someone says something bad about our ideas, it makes us want to stop speaking. Same thing with writing. So, so many of us fear rejection. Another reason we don't write is we don't think we have any worthy ideas. Of course you have worthy ideas. Everyone does. But we have that fear. 
Another one is we have too many ideas. I've got so many ideas. I've, I have hundreds of ideas coming to me all the time. Uh, well, that's not a problem. <laughs> that's actually a good problem. All those ideas, write them down, right? Make a list. Um, another one is you have no audience. One of the problems writers have is they often write for themselves alone. That's a mistake. Write for others. Think about my audience. Who is my audience? And so that can also stop you from writing if you don't have an audience that you're aiming at. Another one is procrastination. I'll write tomorrow. I'm really busy today, but I, tomorrow I will write. <laughs> no, you got to do it today. You have to schedule it into your schedule. Otherwise, it won't happen. Another one is multitasking. You can't write and brush your teeth or walk the dog or go get groceries. There's a sense in which writing, actual writing has to be done as a discipline. Pre-writing you can do anywhere, pre-writing. Remember Donald Murray said you can begin in your mind, but at some point you have to sit down at your computer or with a piece of paper and begin writing. So another fear people have is I can't write because I, I'm not an expert. I don't know everything there is about some topic. Do you wait until you're an expert? Well, you'll never write <laughs> if you do, but you have to know something. So jot down what you know. And this is where um, writing for research, writing for publications, uh, you have to know about something. So if, uh, if I'm gonna write about trains in my country, you've gotta do some research. What do you know about trains? You can't go with just your own experience, do research. What's the latest information about trains? Read, remember I said reading. Read what others have written about the topic. One thing I tell my students, it's your great idea you just came up with. I hate to tell you this, somebody else already thought of it. Somebody else already wrote about that. So read, read what they wrote. Solomon said, nothing is new under the sun. That's true with writing. Somebody else wrote that. Read about it. Talk with experts. Talk with experts. Interview them about the topic. The more you know, the more you research, the more writing grows out of that. So how do I write? I write by starting, by starting. You got to start somewhere. So put your fingers on the keys, Force you, even if you don't feel like it. It's just like having a quiet time with the Lord. You gotta do it. I don't feel like it, I'm tired, but I'm gonna open God's word and I'm gonna read it. I'm gonna take time to pray, just like with, it's the same thing with writing. Put it in your calendar that I'm gonna write. And then uh, to inspire yourself, think of a place or a person or an experience or a memory and begin writing. Use photos or a video clip. So this picture you see on the screen evokes many different stories. Many different stories. I have three children, all of them adults now, but all of them were this age and they played sports. And there are so, so many stories about what children go through in sports teams. And so the expression on this little boy's face talking to his friend and he's saying, the coach is not going to put me in. He never puts me in. I want to play. He's not going to put me in. Right? <laughs> There's stories everywhere. So that's how you can begin writing. And then describe. Describe. Word by word. You can go fast. Uh, you can go slow, but don't stop. Forget the mechanics. Uh, you know, is our... our, our my nouns agreeing with my verbs. Forget about it. Just write. Just write. You can go back later and fix it. Don't worry about order or structure. Just write. Write until the ideas slow or stop. And when they slow or stop, then you save it. You don't want to lose that stuff. And then go take a walk. Go get something to eat. Walk the dog. Come back. And you will find you know how to put everything together. Okay? So you have to start somewhere. So, should you read first? Absolutely. When you read, you observe uh, how, how something is written. Look at the leads. The lead is the first sentence of an article. 
Study how people use words. Look at the use of verbs and nouns. Listen to the pacing of words. All of us read by speaking inside our heads. Listen to how those words work. Uh, I did a, a faculty internship at a newspaper in Michigan um, early in my career. And the editor said, um, your, uh, your writing has to have music. Listen to the rhythm of your writing. And it should flow. And if there's no rhythm or if the rhythm is bad, then you know your writing needs work. Feel the transitions. Transitions between ideas are very important. Transitions between paragraphs. Feel those. Help those to get better. Watch the flow of the idea in how people write as you're reading it. And then um, when you read something really good, really well written, sometimes there's humor in it. Sometimes it's, it's written in a way that just makes you want to weep or cry. Just, wow. Don't just laugh or cry. Understand how that works. Imitate that. So here's a free tip. Download great pieces of writing. Put them on your desktop. Keep an archive of that and go back to that for inspiration. Some of the best writing I've done has come after I've read something and I've said, oh, my word. Oh, I, I, need, to, I need to do something like that. That inspires me. So keep a, keep a file for inspiration. Okay. When you learn to listen, Writing ideas will come and find you. Writing ideas will come and find you. You'll find that when you are uh, listening to God's word, the Holy Spirit speaking into your heart, when you've read and you've been inspired, someone will say something and you'll suddenly say, I got to write about that. Keep a notebook, write that down. You'll find that ideas come to you when you're alone. When you're asleep, I have actually been awakened, awakened in the night. And I've just had to get up, go to my computer, and put some words down. Sometimes when you're writing something boring, <laughs> an inspiring idea will come to you. Don't, don't squelch that. <laughs> Pause. Take notes for that other article. When you're doing math, Ideas will come to you. I am not a math person. My father is an engineer. Uh, for him, numbers are language. For me, numbers are torture. They make me crazy. But when I'm doing math, sometimes an idea will come to me to do writing. And my father would say, stop, no, don't be distracted. Stay with your math. And I'd say, no, I got dead. I got to go. I got to go write. And of course, when you're reading, ideas will come to you. So, you know you're ready to write when the writing takes over. And sometimes you just have to do it. So the other day, I was grading my students' work, and I, I noticed a pattern in what they were learning. And it just hit me, I've got to write about this. So I shot an email off to an editor, and I said, here's my idea. I want to write about how my students are learning um, how to uh, edit each other's work. And she said, I love it. I love it. Send it to me by next month. 5,000 words. And I just, I just wrote it. it. It was like a baby coming out of me. I'm a guy. I have no idea how babies come out of women. But what I'm told is when a baby is ready to come, it's going to come. <laughs> you just, you can't stop it. Uh, and that's how the best writing comes to us.